Hey, this is Mr. Perez. So you're back for some more, huh? That's good. It shows that you're dedicated. Okay, we're going to continue on with our review of fractions, but before we get started, let's get out Charlie. He better be ready to go. Hey, Charlie, you ready to go? Yes, you better be. All right, Charlie, let's get to work. Right there, review of fractions. We're going to do addition and subtraction. Now, don't forget, whenever you add or subtract fractions, the denominators must be the same, okay? So here we go, add or subtract. Write the answers in lowest terms, which means reduce. Let's begin with a review problem, 5 plus 8 subtract 3. Remember, order of operation says we have to work left to right. So 5 plus 8 is 13, subtract 3 is what, Charlie? 10. 10. All right. Now, here we have fractions with the same denominator, so it's basically the same problem, it's just that these are sevenths. So Charlie, what's 5 sevenths plus 8 sevenths subtract 3 sevenths? 10 sevenths. That's right, it's 10 sevenths. It's like saying 5 apples plus 8 apples take away 3 of your apples gives you how many apples, Charlie? 10 apples. 10 apples, of course. Okay. So how do we show our work? Notice we take our numerators and write 5 plus 8 subtract 3, but these are sevenths. And so our answer is 10 sevenths, right? What if the denominators are different? Don't worry, Charlie, I'm getting there. What? All right, so, well, what if the denominators are different? Well, here it is, Charlie, right there, your majesty. What? Anyway, let's get to work here. Now, notice our denominators are different. We have a 2, a 4, and a 3. Now, what do we have to do, Charlie? Find the LCD. Find the LCD. Okay, the LCD is the lowest common denominator, so we can think of it as the lowest or smallest number that all your denominators divide evenly into. So, Charlie, what's the smallest number that a 2, a 4, and a 3 divide evenly into? 12. It's a 12, right? Okay, smallest positive numbers. All right. Now, so each fraction is going to be made to have a denominator of 12. And so, it's the denominators that are going to guide us through this problem. Watch. Okay, here's the 5 halves, Charlie. Now, what do I multiply that 2 by to get the 12? 6. 6, that's right. So notice, you're not multiplying the fraction by 6, you're multiplying the fraction by 6 over 6, which is equal to 1. Remember, anything times 1 is itself, so we're not changing the fraction. Remember, 5 halves times 6 over 6 will be 30 twelfths, and if you reduce 30 twelfths, of course, you're going to get 5 halves. So it's still the same fraction, it just has a different denominator. All right, Charlie, now, let's go to the 3 fourths. Look at the denominator. 4 times what gives us 12? 3. That's right. So notice the top and the bottom by 3. We're not multiplying 3 fourths by 3. We're multiplying 3 fourths by 3 over 3, right? Be sure you make that clear if you're explaining this to someone, because remember, you're multiplying each fraction by a 1, but the 1 is being written in different forms. 5 halves was multiplied by 6 over 6. 3 fourths will be multiplied by 3 over 3. Now, bring us home, Charlie. Look at that denominator, the last one. 3 times what is 12? 4. That's right. And so 8 thirds is being multiplied by 4 over 4, which is 1. Okay. Now, this is multiplied straight across the top, straight across the bottom. 5 halves times 6 over 6 is what, Charlie? 30 twelfths. That's right. What's 3 fourths times 3 over 3? 9 twelfths. Very good. And what's 8 thirds times 4 over 4? 32 twelfths. 32 twelfths. Very nice. Now, let's do arithmetic. Take our numerators. 30 plus 9 subtract 32. These are twelfths. And 30 plus 9 is 39. Subtract 32 is 7, so it is 7 twelfths. Whew, that was a tough one, right? All right, Charlie, let's go to our next one here. Add, write the answer in lowest terms. So now we're going to do mixed numbers. Now, don't get scared. Now, some of you might want to say, I like to change my mixed numbers into improper fractions first. You can do it that way, or you can just leave them as mixed numbers, and that's the way we're going to approach this first. We'll do it both ways, watch. Now, we have 3 and 1 fifth plus 2 and 2 fifths. Now, remember, 3 and 1 fifth means 3 plus 1 fifth, as 2 and 2 fifths means 2 plus 2 fifths. So what we generally do is, because we're adding, we'll add the whole numbers, and we're going to add this to the sum of the fractional parts, because mixed numbers are sums of whole numbers and, fra and the fractional parts. Well, if you're doing an addition problem, you add the whole numbers and you add the fractions. If you were doing a subtraction problem, you would subtract the, you do a subtraction with the whole numbers and a subtraction with the fractions, but you still add them together. We'll get to one of those in a second. Okay, now, let's add the whole numbers. 3 plus 2 is what, Charlie? 5. And 1 fifth plus 2 fifths is what? 3 fifths. That's right, that's easy because the denominators are the same. 
and we have 5 and 3 fifths. Now, if we're going to change this to an improper fraction, remember our technique, Charlie, it goes like this. 5 times 5 is 25, which means 25 fifths plus 3 more fifths is 28 fifths. So there's our answer as a mixed number and as an improper fraction. Well, suppose we started the problem by initially writing the mixed numbers as improper fractions. Well, for 3 and 1 fifth, 5 times 3 is 15, which means 15 fifths plus 1 fifth is 16 fifths. And for the 2 and 2 fifths, 5 times 2 is 10, which means 10 fifths plus 2 more fifths is that 12 fifths. And now with the denominator the same, it's just 16 plus 12 fifths, which is 28 fifths, which is the same answer. Now, how do you change an improper fraction to a mixed number? Well, 5 goes to 28 5 times with the remainder of 3, because 5 times 5 is 25. You still have a remainder of 3, so it's 5 and 3 fifths. Okay, same answer, right? That was a tough one, right? Okay, let's do another one. Let's do some more mixed numbers. This time we're doing a subtraction. Well, our first approach will be to change the mixed numbers to improper fractions first. So let's do that first. We go 3 times 3 is 9. That means 9 thirds plus 1 third is 10 thirds. Subtract 2 and 3 fourths now. 4 times 2 is 8, which means 8 fourths plus 3 more fourths is 11 fourths. And what we have is 2 improper fractions with different denominators. So we have to do what, Charlie? Find the LCD. That's right. And so what's the LCD? 12. 12, that's right, because 3 and a 4 both divide evenly into 12. 12 is the smallest number. Okay, now, look at the denominators here, Charlie. 3 times what will give me 12? 4. That's right, so top and bottom by 4. And now look at this one here, 11 fourths. What do I multiply the 4 by to get the 12? 3. That's right, so don't forget, top and bottom. So now, let's multiply. 10 thirds times 4 over 4 is 40 twelfths, okay? Subtract, 11 fourths times 3 over 3 is 33 twelfths, right? There we go. And so basically we have 40 subtract 33 twelfths, which is 7 twelfths. Very nice there, Charlie. All right, now, well, let's try doing the problem by leaving the numbers in their mixed number form. Well, some of you won't like this, but we're going to do it anyway, just so we understand how to do it, should we ever have to run into this. Okay, here we go. Now, 3 and 1 third subtract 2 and 3 fourths, Charlie. Now watch. Here, we're, gonna, we're doing a subtraction problem, so we're going to subtract the whole number of parts. We're also going to subtract the fractional parts, but notice there's an addition in the middle, because mixed numbers are, are really sums of whole numbers and fractional parts. So when you're doing a subtraction problem, you subtract the whole numbers, and you subtract the fractional parts, but you still have to add them together, because that's what a whole number is. Okay, now this is a little tricky here. 3 subtract 2 is 1, plus now the 1 third subtract 3 fourths, we've got to find the LCD, which again is 12, right? Okay, so let's take our work up here. Now, what do I multiply 1 third? Remember, focus on the denominator. Four. What do I multiply 1 third by to get a denominator of 12, Charlie? Remember, look at the denominator. 3 times what is 12? 4. It's 4, so we're multiplying it by 4 over 4, right? And the 3 fourths, we're going to multiply by 3 over 3 because the denominator is controlling us. 4 times 3 is 12. Okay, so now, 1 third times 4 over 4 is 4 twelfths. Subtract 3 fourths times 3 over 3 is the 9 twelfths. And 1 plus 4 twelfths subtract 9 twelfths, same denominator, but 4 subtract 9 is negative 5. So we'll put the negative in front, negative 5 twelfths, okay? We're kind of moving very quickly through here, because this is not the ideal way to do it, right? Okay, now, notice, we have a whole number and a fraction. So if we're going to write the whole number as a fraction with a denominator of 12, it's so easy, it's confusing. How do I write the 1 as a fraction with a denominator of 12, Charlie? 12 over 12. 12 over 12, which is 1. So we have 12 over 12 plus a negative 5 twelfths. And remember, when you add a negative number, you subtract its opposite. So it's 12 twelfths, subtract 5 twelfths. And 12 subtract 5 is 7, and so it is 7 twelfths, right? Whew. It's a tough problem when you use that approach. Anyway, that's enough for today. We'll see you all again soon.